Welcome back to another Dirtbaggery book review. I, of course, am Bruce, because who else would I be? Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about a book that I picked up from my book exchange. Um, and I would mentioned it in another video where it was my current read, but um, I really ended up, I think, liking this book more than I actually thought I was going to. Um, and that is Witchy Eye by DJ Butler. Um, I actually heard about this book before, and I like brain hold it because when I found it at the bookstore, I didn't. I kind of recognized the guy's name, but I totally forgot that I actually listened to this author on a podcast, um, on the Rogers Dojo podcast. Um, but anyway, yeah, I like this way more than I thought I was going to. Uh, my current read is still Beowulf. Um, yeah, still good. Like it. Uh, I haven't really read it today. I did a little writing. Fell asleep and decided to come out here and do a quick book review, and that's where I'm at. So, um, how are you guys? You guys doing good? Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's do the synopsis and then we'll get into talking about this book. Sarah Calhoun is the 15 year old daughter of the elector Andrew Calhoun, one of Appalachia's military heroes, and one of the electors who gets to decide who will next ascend as the emperor of the new world. None of that matters to Sarah. She has a natural talent for hexing and one bad eye. And all she wants is to be left alone, especially by outsiders. But Sarah's world gets turned on its head at the Nashville Tobacco Fair when a Yankee wizard priest tries to kidnap her. Sarah fights back with the aid of a mysterious monk named Dalinus, who is one of the not-quite-human firstborn mound builders of the Ohio. It is Thalinus who reveals to Sarah a secret heritage she never dreamed could be hers. Now on a desperate quest with Thalinus to claim this heritage, she is hunted by the Emperor's bodyguard of elite dragoons, as well as by darker things, shape-shifting mockers and undead lazars, and behind them a power more sinister still. If Sarah cannot claim her heritage, it may mean the end to her, her family, and to the world where she is just beginning to find her place. All right, so this book is a lore whore's dream. Honestly, like it's it's so much that I I almost gave up on the book when I was starting out. I was like, this is way too much for me to keep track of. And I mean, the book is pretty big. Um, and I, I don't know, at first I was a little overwhelmed. I was like, how am I supposed to keep track of all this stuff? Um, but what I did was I just pushed through and I kind of let all those details just kind of wash over me. And eventually what you notice is that the core details, like the story of the actual characters and what lore and backstory of the world pertains specifically to them, that stuff tends to float to the top because it's pertinent and it's what actually matters. And the rest of the stuff just really helps to flesh out the world and make it super vibrant and like a real place. Um, so it's, it's very expansive. There's a ton of stuff going on. So it's, it's an alternate history. It's Earth, and it's uh, I want to say it's the 1700s. It's, it's there's people alive that knew George Washington, right? Um, but it's like everything's there's magic is real. There's like multiple empires and countries or whatever kingdoms in the New World, right? So in America, um, and it there's there's a lot of names you'll recognize from real U.S. history, but everything's so kind of twisted and turned in different directions. Um, it's really really interesting. Um, so if you are super, super into complex, deep, rich lore, this is a really good book for you to go with. Um, I, I do like it, but I'm not going to um, spend the time to like memorize all these things. Um, still a great book, and I'm going to read the rest of the series. Um, I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not that big of a lore whore. I'm going to try and memorize all this stuff. A um, little too in-depth for my blood. But like I said... A lot of it's just a flavor, or it feels like just a flavor of the world, and the pertinent stuff, kind of, if you just keep going through and just follow the characters, the pertinent lore is going to kind of stand out. Um, so I think he did a wonderful, fantastic job with the lore on this. Yeah, and then the setting is one of the, I've definitely never come across a setting, uh, like this setting particularly, like in America, this time period, and especially with this alternate history and magic and all the different things he's got going on this is a very unique setting so it's you got your black powder weapons you got people with you know melee weapons but there's also people 
that are capable of different kinds of magic. Um, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a, it's a really, really original, inventive, cool setting. And, um, I don't know what to say about that. It's, it's great. Very cool. It's a nice change of pace. It's like a good palate cleanser from, you know, reading a bunch of Warhammer books and, you know, or like Land and Sea and all these other things. It's just a very unique take on a, <clears throat> on earth really on, on America, on American setting. Um, I haven't read a lot of like historical fiction or like alternate history stuff, which maybe this isn't that original in that genre. I don't know. To me, it it is unique. I haven't really come across anything like this setting before. So um, kudos to DJ Butler. Good job. This has got a really cool magic system. Um, so beyond just like, you know, you use magic and it drains you, which is fairly common. Um, I really like the way he, <clears throat> the way the magic works is it's not just like rigid, like you think Harry Potter, like expel the armor. It's that thing that does one thing. Um, and you have to like learn another spell that does something else. In this, it's kind of up to the caster to make a clear, I mean, there are rules, but those allow you to kind of govern and leaves you really um, open-ended for the caster to create a spell that has a unique effect for a unique situation that they want to accomplish, right? So um, they can pick up different items that are closely related to whatever the outcome they want to be is. So if you want to turn into a bird, grab some bird poop and some feathers or something. Uh, if you want to track somebody, you know, get a piece of their hair. And the further away from that you'd get, so like if it was like a note or something that they barely touched or, you know, it's going to be a weaker effect. Um, and then there's Cool. So like obviously being alternate history, Isaac Newton existed, but he was a wizard um, and he has laws and the wizards look to those laws to, you know, guide them as they go to conduct spells um, and different different ways of speaking can help you to, I guess it's more just to help you focus your spell and bring it into you know, clarity, into focus to allow you to, to accomplish the effect you want to accomplish. So like speaking in Latin for whatever reason seems to uh, help with that. Or if you speak in like rhymes, um, that can work too, but it's a lot harder because then you have to think of the rhymes. Whereas if you just speak in Latin, if you learn Latin, then you can, or they said, I think any other like dead languages, um, I can't remember what the reason was, but for some reason, a language that's dead seems to be stronger, more potent for spell casting. Um, and then the rhymes, they work, but again, you have to like, constant thing of, of a rhyme so if you can learn a dead language it's easier for you to on the fly convey what it is you want just by speaking the language rather than having to come up with a rhyme it's honestly like way bigger than that. i mean there's the the, uh, the ley lines are these huge magical currents um who uh the protagonist sarah calhoun she can see them with her witchy eye um and then things like the mississippi river are huge fonts of magical energy um, the Serpent's Mound in Ohio, it's another one. It's a huge uh, res reserve, well, reservoir, whatever you want to say, of magical energy. Oof. Um, so just, I mean, it's a big magic system, so I'm not really going to like break it completely down, but really cool. I uh, I really like this book. I was, I'm super shocked. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, um, but once I got into it and kind of pushed through that, kind of a <laughs> the lore overlord overlord overload um i really liked it the characters are awesome the story's awesome the magic's awesome the setting's cool um yeah just what's not to like even um there's so in the beginning of the story sarah calhoun her eyeball is like all swollen and shut and eventually it gets smashed open and there's a little acorn in it and i'm not going to go too much into that but the acorn is magical um basically her dad was a gangster wizard and he was a king. He's a bet he's a badass. Um, and he was dying. And he took three acorns and I can't remember what he did. He like kissed him or some crap, cast a spell on him, right? And then their mom ate the acorns and then they were born. And her and her two siblings each have a deformity. So she had the eye. I can't remember what her siblings had, like an ear and a nose or some crap. Um, but that basically inside that deformity is that acorn. Um and she uses it later on. You'll see how it definitely comes back into play. It's not just some random weird thing. Um, but really, like, just 
I would never like that's super interesting and creative and invent like that so cool. Uh loved it. Oh, and then not I'm this will be the last thing about the magic and then I'll move on. Um so there's the firstborn, which is the whole thing with like with like Christianity and like Adam's first wife and like their children and Eve is like the second wife and there's this whole thing where when they die um that they there's like this huge release of energy um that people can capture for magical purposes um and that comes into play with the arch villains kind of his master plan um that's all I'm going to say on that matter but dude it's just so cool like his alter alter history with the religions um with how magic is cited it's just such a wildly original take on everything the magic the setting uh the history it's so cool i love it and there's like there's so between the firstborn right and then there's this beast folk and then there's regular humans which are the children of eve there's a lot of prejudice especially targeted from the the children of eve toward um the firstborn and beast folk um and there are like beast folk aren't like all innocent there's a lot of like feral uh savage beast folk out there so they're not all like pocahontas Native Americans, okay? But 100% that prejudice definitely plays a major role uh, with a lot of the characters and throughout the plot and theme of this book. And I'm sure probably going forward, the other two books, I think. And there is a pretty big cast of varied, uh, dynamic, fleshed out characters that are just awesome between Sarah Calhoun, Calvin Calhoun, or Cal. Uh, Thalanes, Thalanes, I don't, I'm not, there's no way I'm saying that name right. Um, who else we got here? Obadiah, Bill, Kathy, Berkeley, Angleton, Sorcerer Hook, Cromwell. D dude, the list goes on. There are so many cool characters. Even the secondary characters are fleshed out. Dude, they're cool. Um, they all have different motives. You know, some, some of them are mentors who are kind of steady throughout the whole story. Some are stepping into new roles. Some are learning new things. Some are taking new chances. Some are finding redemption. Some are finding purpose. It's just just an outstanding and dynamic cast of characters. Like, well done. Uh, I feel like I keep, I feel like I'm over praising this book. I feel like it's coming off like that, but it's a really good book. Um, and so much of it is just, I, like it, it's cool. It's 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 just a fun original book. I love it. I feel like I'm arguing with you. Am I coming off as like abrasive uh, uh, or confrontational? I'm sorry. It's cool. Um, and then the world itself is is pretty cruel. Like it's a savage, hard world. But unlike a lot of newer fantasy, like don't shoot me, but The Witcher or like Game of Thrones, where it's just a brutal fantasy world where maybe there are no heroes and it's just booby and wiener jokes or you know you know it's like very crass and in your face that is that's maybe not quite as vivid in this but um yeah i don't know it's just nice i like my fantasy with the heroes right as much as i love Geralt, the dude doesn't really step up to the plate until he's like forced to which i don't know i'm kind of getting over that whole genre of or style of uh, fantasy. And, uh, I just, yeah, I like, I like a cruel, hard world. Don't get me wrong, but I, I need to have heroes in there. Dude. You got to have some good people. Even a book like servants of war is an incredibly bleak, savage world. And yet there are good men in there who don't get killed in fight in the first five seconds. Um, wow. Also really cool creatures, cool monsters. I mean, between you have like these weird clay golem things uh you have the lazars which are probably the weird like the most interesting take on undead i've seen and it might be from some folklore that i'm not familiar with but um basically like if you cut their fingernails off or their hair or whatever whatever appendage you cut off the what is this uh keratin is that that is that the you know nail their hair anyway so if you cut like toenails off that whole leg will go limp and be like paralyzed until it has time to reheal but you got a minute you know, you gotta, it seems like there's a while before that can happen. So when they're like fighting these undead, if you manage to chop their nails off or give them a haircut or some crap, that's, you can like paralyze them, which is kind of funny and like really bizarre, but 
I don't know. It was, it's just a, it's weird. It's weird to see like they're in this like strong, weird in a good way. It's um, like you're in this like intense combat and they're like, hi, chop off your fingernails. And like arm goes limp, dude. Um, I don't know. Very, very inventive. I know I've said that word like three times now, but um, it is. It's a very inventive story. And there is, for all you people that like to ship your characters, there's a ton of good, compelling, heartbreaking relationships in this one. Um, where you want people to get together and they don't quite get together, but maybe there's hope for them in the later stories. We'll see um, between like Bill and Kathy, Calvin and Sarah. Um, just, just a good book. I'm so glad I picked this up at uh, my used bookstore for $4. Really, really good deal. But that's all I got for this review. Um, I highly recommend Witchy Eye and I'm sure the rest of the series, which I will be Trying to go and get my hands on. I'm um, not trying. I will I will be getting my hands on those. And um, yeah, if you're still watching, thanks for being here. And go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. And let me know if you've read this. Tell me what you think. And then um, if you haven't, tell me what you saw the video. All right? You guys have a great night. And keep on reading.